and some of you may have heard me say this before, that the only three things I ever saw come out of Tennessee that were good were the three interstates going north. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, Tennessee created a program very similar to this called the Tennessee Promise, which has been met with astound astounding success. And um, when we looked at that, and we looked at, uh, and you all have heard in your districts, so many employers, so many people say, we need a trained workforce. We know that in the next 20 years, it, it will take a college degree, a four-year degree, in probably 65% of the jobs in Kentucky uh, to move forward and get those jobs. So what are we doing? It's, it's on the uh, agenda of almost every political debate talking about how we get ready and prepare Kentucky's kids to meet the challenges of being work ready. And so Mr. Chairman, with uh, your help and the help of uh, many others, we were able, and Dr. Box was very helpful in helping us put together this program, which you have before you today, in House Bill 626. It creates the Kentucky Work Ready Scholarship Program to fill the tuition gap for Kentucky students to provide affordable access and obtain a post-secondary degree and ensure Kentucky has a skilled, competitive workforce. Students must enroll, must enroll in the Kentucky Community and Technical College system in the academic term immediately following high school graduation or prior to the student's 19th birthday after obtaining a GED. Students must also complete the free application for federal student aid, enroll in at least 12 credit hours, maintain enrollment each subsequent academic term, and maintain a 2.0 GPA. The scholarship amount for a student is the amount remaining after subtracting the student's federal and state grants and scholarships from the tuition amount charged to the student. It's the last dollar in. <coughs> Excuse me. A student can receive the scholarship for up to six semesters or until completing an associate's degree, whichever comes first. The program can begin this fall in the 16-17 academic year the Kentucky Higher Education Assistance Authority will administer the program. We have a committee substitute, Mr. Chairman. We uh, do, and it's in, if I can interrupt you, Mr. Speaker, it is in uh, uh, everyone's folder. Uh, and if you want to explain th those changes that are technical in nature. They are technical in nature. It clarifies that KHEAA will establish deadlines for submission of the FAFSA and the scholarship application clarifies that eligible students must graduate from a Kentucky high school and that includes, some of you have asked this question, public, private and home schools by the way. It clarifies the grade point average requirements for keeping the scholarship. The student must have a 2.0 cumulative GPA at the end of the school year, not per semester. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, we were able to find the money without creating any new debt within uh, the existing budget. As most of you know, uh, Governor Bevin in his recommendations made quite an effort to uh, fund the retirement. He fully funded the KERS ARC. He funded about 70% or so of the KTRS uh, ARC, actually required contribution. But he also put some money away uh, saying that it was going to be used for uh, helping alleviate those pension uh, requirements, the pension uh, obligations that we have. Our position is that that is a significant, I believe, uh, step forward uh, if the uh, General Assembly adopts that budget on that part of the budget. But we can't solve that pension problem in one, in one session. It developed over a number of years. Uh, we can solve it over time uh, by maintaining the contributions to the systems at those levels, particularly to KERS. Remember those of you who were here in 2013 when we passed the pension reform bill, that was the obligation that we talked about, the General Assemblies in the future over time, if they continue to make those actuarially required contributions would solve that particular problem. So uh, for those who would say, well, can we afford it now? I would submit that just the opposite. Can we not afford it? Can we? not train our children? Can we not have them ready for Kentucky's uh, demands? Can we say 
that it's not a good investment. I don't think anybody can argue that it's not a good investment, Mr. Chairman. And it would apply to every community college all across Kentucky. Every one of you in your districts have families, working families and children who will be positively affected if this bill becomes law. And I would urge you to give that serious consideration, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. It's one of the most exciting programs I've seen come about really since the Education Reform Act of 1990. I mean, here's a chance to, to make a true difference in the lives of so many Kentuckians all across the state, getting these kids work ready. And uh, I, I just am so enthusiastic about it. I'd be happy to answer any questions. I would yield to Dr. Box, Mr. Chairman, to uh, fill any of the gaps that I may have uh, omitted.